Tested by Hardy and Chris and the police. Hello, kitties. Hello. We're going to have a real good time together. I'm thinking of adding that. What do you think? Yeah, why not? The the Velvet Underground mm-hmm. yes. song? Yes. Yeah. I like Thank, it. You. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank uh, you. It raise, it it makes a high bar for us to try to get over. It does. Sets the stage, though. It does. And it puts the onus on our guests to really deliver in that regard. Right. That's true doesn't put it on us puts it on them. no please yeah this is us just we just throw the equipment onto the field and go i right. don't know i guess this is lacrosse maybe yeah, play something. this yeah i don't know we're like bad roadies yeah exactly passed out way before the opening act ever 100 percent. gets the stage this week well i guess this week it's episode 404 so yes if you are listening from day one thank you so much for giving us this much of your time yes we hope it has been worth it. And if it has it, don't let it be reflected in your review. Right. Let's just put it that way. Right. Uh, so this week, I was going to say this week we have Emily James, but we, I guess it, this week we do have Emily we James. We do have, it um, is not an untrue statement. We just, for those who are listening to this months later, we released four episodes day one to really give our listeners a good taste of a variety of the people we're talking to. Yes, I mean, and we still have Emily James on the show, regardless of when we, you're listening. We do. We yes. Do. And so probably Emily's... if you're listening to it years from now, she's a huge megastar. Mm-hmm. And you're like, how did they score her? Right. Somebody then? messed up in the PR department. Right. And I feel like we, um, I, I always dislike shows that are like, oh, keep an eye on this person. They're going to yeah. be big. Agreed. But she's a really good singer songwriter mm-hmm. and we've tried this first week to put up four episodes that show a little bit of the variety we will be trying to bring to you every single week yes we have sort of the uh the mount rushmore of of music with someone like chris hillman indeed and i think you could say nikki as well is a oh, mount rushmore yes. type person yes. um somebody who is an expert and knows more about has forgotten more about music than we will ever remember and someone mm-hmm. like Doug yes. and giving us a really interesting insight into a particular artist and or era. Mm-hmm. And then we have somebody like Emily who is newer to the game, but uh, has put out, I don't know how many EPs. It's um, fascinating. It is. And a lot it's of like this. three or four. Yeah. And she writes all their own stuff. She right. um, has done a lot of this, a lot of the recording she's done from home, given mm-hmm. the world circumstances. And it's really haunting and really, and her her outlook is really sort of, I don't know, it's, it's fun to see someone at the front end who's been inspired by all these other people we've talked to, but exactly. really talking at like her musical journey is it's not just started because to your point, she's put out several things already, but she's really feeling her way through to see what the future holds for her. It's yes. really cool. And so I think we could say the goal of this show is to show you both artists, front ends and back ends. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Right. Cause it still come always the, comes back. Come to for the front end, stay for the back end. <laughs> stay for the back end. <laughs> <laughs> and everything in between. Perfect. Well, yeah, we apologize for this intro. <laughs> yes. And all Emily, of our future we, intros. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and don't let your rating of the show on iTunes or your player of choice uh, reflect our complete immaturity. Right. right? Unless you like yes. that sort of thing. It, yeah. If you love it, then let's go six stars mm-hmm. if you can. Was there a reason you went with the EP format versus an LP? Yeah. um, So when I started this EP, um, the songs were kind of all, I was making them all as individual um, songs and didn't really envision them um, being together initially. So um, it felt 
strange to um, just all of a sudden throw them into an album together because that wasn't my intention from the start. So um, instead, I kind of looked at them and um, picked the songs that I felt, um, you know, went best together and told a story and um, decided that it would be best to split it up into two parts. Um, and, you know, it's also a little bit easier to digest. Um, so, yeah. And what was the writing process like? Because they all, they could seem very personal or they could all seem of a character where you're trying to tell a story. Right. I right. guess it's a, that's the smarter way of me asking, like, did you make out with somebody in a kitchen? Or is this a character that you came up with? <laughs> Um, yeah, we're not holding back here. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Never do. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I like, I, I, I don't like to get too specific about, um, the inspiration behind the song solely because I like people to attach their own meanings to it. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like, um, release days are always kind of a strange feeling because it's exciting, but at the same time, it's like you've had this child with you um, for all this time. And then now all of a sudden you're kind of showing it to the world and releasing it off to um, have its own life with other people. Um, but yeah, as far as the writing process, um, that one that you mentioned that was then um, is one that I did uh, by myself, wrote and produced, um, and a few of them were like that. That was then The List and uh, Venice. And then um, three of them were collaborations where I wrote them with some of my friends and co-produced. Um, so it was really fun to have that, um, the two sides of that, because it's such different processes, um, but I love both of them equally. <laughs> you have a pretty intense looking mic there. Do you a lot, do a lot of home recording? Do you ever, do you just do demos? Or are you working on the pieces that will become tracks on the CP? Yeah, yeah. Um, most of the songs on there were recorded here and on this mic, actually. Um, so, yeah, only a couple of them where um, maybe I was don't fall on me and uh back in the summer were the original um uh vocals from when we wrote the song so those were uh when we were in the studio writing them but um yeah it's it, that's also um interestingly different because i feel uh sometimes i perform a song differently when i'm at home versus in a studio because you know if you're just by yourself and singing a song, it's such an intimate experience and you're just alone and with your thoughts versus when there's somebody else in the room or a couple people, you know, you're suddenly conscious of that and um, it just creates different performances, I think. Yeah. So what was that process, not to go back, but the... Yeah in talking about sort of the, the difference between when you're writing solo and then collaborating with your friends, did you know going in that these were friends that, that you knew you could work with, or was it something that you kind of figured out along the way, like, okay, we can hit our stride. Or was there a point where you're like, Oh, I'm not sure if these were the right friends to do this. with? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny because um, with songwriting, a lot of times you just kind of, um, you know, meet people through a mutual friend or, um, you know, somebody you've worked with in the past. And so um, most uh, the two out of three of the collaborations, when I wrote them with the people I did, that was my first time meeting them. So, um, you know, it's kind of strange. You just have to meet these people and kind of bare your soul to them right away and it's it's kind of like you're meeting someone for the first time and you walk in and just take all your clothes off like <laughs> that's kind of what all it right. feels like sometimes <laughs> and you know you just have to be comfortable with that and um I think there's kind of a known um a known um I'm trying to find the word but just um not secrecy but you know um 
privacy and confidence, I guess, that um, everything kind of stays in the room and um, that you will open up and then the other person will return that back. Um, so it's it's really I, I don't mind it because I love like I hate small talk. I, I like, you know, just getting right into it with people. So um, I guess it works for me. So and that's interesting because like you said, your stuff is so personal and it's coming from a personal place. That's the inspiration for it all. And that do you think it was if it was somebody you knew better, it'd be a little a little more, a little more difficult if it would be a little harder to do that. But if because it's a relative stranger, there's sort of a, well, you don't know me that well, so I can tell you this stuff and you won't connect who I'm really talking about. Yeah, I've never thought of that, but I think that's definitely true. Um, I think sometimes maybe my family and friends are surprised about what they hear in my songs <laughs> because it's harder <laughs> for me to communicate that just by talking about it. Um, whereas, you know, you can really tell it like you said when when somebody's so disconnected from the story and the experience um it's kind of easier to just say how you really feel about it um so yeah i, I definitely think that's true hmm. when did you know you had that in you that that ability to create a beautiful song <laughs> um i think well, it's it's interesting. I I was always singing and um I would kind of be riffing random songs when I was little. I had a little karaoke machine and would make everyone in my family sit down and put on a performance for them probably in like a princess dress. Um <laughs> and um I still do that with my family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. You yes. know, quarantine activities. <laughs> right. Um but Excuse me. yeah, so then um I and I recently found some kind of um random pieces of paper of when I was really little and just had written down like and I I it like took me back I could remember the melodies of the things that I wrote mm -hmm. even though it wasn't like you know a real song but I think when I was about 10 um was when I wrote my first kind of full structured song um I just remember um you know that was the time where I started listening to music really and dissecting it and um realizing okay the, there are these things that I guess are verses where you know melodically they're the same but lyrically they're different and then there's these choruses where they're melodically and lyrically the same and then there's this other section which I didn't know it was a bridge but it's like melodically and lyrically different from everything else so um I just remember kind of like going along with that formula and then just seeing what happened and then fell in love with the process. Have you been trained sort of traditionally or how much of this has just been, like you said, self-taught of analyzing the songs you like and going, oh, well, Bob Dylan does it this way. So right. he can't be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was, I was taking piano lessons. Um, I started when I was about five and then uh, started guitar lessons around 13. Um, but as far as songwriting, that kind of came on its own. And I never really, you know, took any classes on it or anything. Um, I thought about that and I respect, you know, people who do that. But I just felt I don't want um, to then start getting in my head about rules. You know, I, I want to just kind of roll with what feels right. So, uh, just well, kind of went there. Yeah. And I mean, again, to circle back to it, your stuff is so personal. It, it's hard to, what's it like to go back to your old records now? Because you're writing from such a, an emotional, personal place. It's yeah. gotta be like, is it like reading your diary? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, especially the really old stuff because it's just, um, you know, it, it almost feels like another person you know, because um, the songs kind of change meaning for me. I think even um, songs that I may still perform, but I had written their song. There's one song that I wrote when I was 14 and I put it on my album, which I released only a couple years ago. And um, that one has 
kind of evolved and taken on a new life as I've grown. So it's it's kind of cool how they can grow with me. And then some of them, it's it's um, you kind of they kind of stay in the past. So um, it's it's interesting to see which ones kind of evolve like that. And it's got to be interesting too, as a creative person, as a writer, that I mean the difference between you know, 14 and, you know, 20, that's a huge gap. That's yeah. not 27 to 37. Like that's a major leap. So yeah. it's got to be, I mean, how much have you learned? Have you gone back to these songs and been like, oh man, what was I thinking? <laughs> the structure, the, yeah. I thought this Some rhyme I could get away with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. But I, I try not to be hard on myself because, um, you know, it's, it's all just a, a growing a, a growth and um you know I'm I, I'm learning as I go I'm never gonna feel like I know what I'm doing uh, I'm always gonna be learning new things and um I I want it to stay that way you know I I just want to always be learning and I think um yeah I I um I just try to contextualize it with where I was at at the time and then um and then know where I'm at now and look at it that way and what about the production side of things there's very much a sound that you have on a lot of your music are you really involved in that or is that where you kind of step away yeah no I'm definitely very involved um even in the earlier stages um I'm I'm really grateful to all the producers I worked with in the past just because I learned so much from them and they, even if I was young, they never shut down my ideas or disregarded them. They, it was always, you know, a collaborative process of, oh yeah, I like that. Let's do this. And yeah, it was always, you know, bouncing and growing it higher and higher. Um, so I really attribute my confidence, um, to those people and those early experiences. And, um, now, uh, it's, I've, um, again, with, with kind of not judging what comes out of myself, um, and knowing I'm never going to know it all. Um, that was kind of the most freeing, um, concept to me because it, it allowed me to not get in my own way and just kind of roll with what comes out and know that, maybe in a few years I'll look back at this song and say, oh, I would have done this differently, but that's because I have new knowledge and I didn't have that at the time. Um, but yeah, I just love how um, with production you can create this whole world and um, by changing that you can change the entire feel of the song and emotion. So, so many people, not so many, but a lot of people love to write and write songs and lyrics and poetry and all those different things. But it's so rare to actually be able to truly do it as a career or to truly pursue it. How did you know what steps to take to, to be able to do that, especially at such a young age? That's a good question. I think um, I knew that I wanted to, I think I, I never started thinking like oh I am gonna make a lot of money doing this you know it was just kind of um you know going back to one of your previous questions with you know putting music out young I and you know it being a development period I think I've always wanted I've I've felt such an urgency to put music out especially because like you said it feels kind of like a diary and for me sometimes these projects are little time capsules of my life at that time and um so I can kind of look back and it's um you know kind of reliving that experience and um <clears throat> also just you know as I've grown and have grown more listeners um joining me on my journey it's um it's become more than just writing for myself but you know people have reached out and told me that my songs have helped them through something difficult and 
that is just everything to me because, you know, I think music is so powerful and um, with bringing people together and helping people through hard times. So um, it's become, you know, more than just me, but I want to use it to help other people and bring people joy and comfort. Um, so I think that's, that's always why I want to be putting out music. Well, it's such a gift to have, to be able to give that to somebody who you don't know any other way. Who are those artists for you growing up that did that for you? And has mm -hmm. that list of names changed in the 10 years you've been doing stuff? Yeah, I, th I think it has um, changed in that it's grown. You know, I, I still go back to my earliest influences. Um, you know, I, I always cite Adele, uh, Adele's 21 album as kind of the turning point for me with music because that was, um, you know, when I was about 11 and those, those songs, especially someone like you just struck me so hard, um, you know, as a young person who hadn't experienced heartbreak on that level, but still feeling her emotions that just really showed me the power of writing and, um, I think too, uh, you mentioned Bob Dylan earlier, definitely his writing. Um, I've always loved Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nicks. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm always listening to, um, new music and other independent artists and just, um, you know, uh, learning from others. And, um, I'm trying to think of somebody recently who, um, it's always you you ha you have all the names and then I know. somebody I, asks you and you go blank yeah every anytime anyone's like oh what have you been listening to i have to like <laughs> look on my spotify like what did i just <laughs> listen to <laughs> so yeah um is it anyone that would surprise us is it is it other singer songwriters i mean the folks you mentioned clearly are very good at that but is yeah. there something on there where you're like that you take something from that perhaps would surprise someone who loves your stuff um i think are I you think, a secret like insane clown posse fan <laughs> i mean that was my older sisters where <laughs> we have like an in sync and backstreet boys like christmas ornament um <laughs> two different ornaments um so yeah they definitely live on in our house um i don't know i I don't know. I mean, I was a big One Direction fan when I was, you know, 13, but I think that's that's fair enough. Who wasn't? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but lately, I, you know, I again, I listen to all kinds of genres. Um, I've been listening a lot uh, to a lot of Arlo Parks um, and uh, this Brit uh, this other British artist, Celeste. Um, I love I don't know if you guys are familiar with her, but mm -hmm. she's, you know, and she's very jazzy and bluesy and um, same with early jazz and blues influences. Etta James, Ella Fitzgerald. Um, I, you know, I would say my music is so different from that, but I just admire the vocal ability and the emotion. And, you know, again, it's all about how it makes you feel. So um, I, I just go with music that makes me feel something really. I hear your voice and my heart's kick started through the crowd some around the edge of the Emily's new EP, Wanted You To Know Part 1, is available wherever you get music. For more information, you can check out her website, emilyjames.net. You can follow us on all the various socials. You can check out our website at rockandrollgradschool.com for more grad school content. And please leave us a review on iTunes. We're tired of asking our family members to do so. Today's show is produced by myself and Heidi Hedquist. Our reluctant executive producers are John Sobe and Sandy Stone. Our willing producers are Rachel Allen and Randy Jeanette. Our intern is Zach Jackson. Our graphic designer is Samantha Mastonen. This one's for Philippe. Thank you, good night, and may all your favorite bands stay together. So I act unattached, but you got me unguarded. Just doing what I can to keep it so lighthearted. But I can't help but
fact that my mind keeps track of everywhere your hands have been to think it's too late now to ever restart it cause i keep running through the past trying to figure it out that was then 